All right, good evening, everybody. It's uh, just about five after six, so we're going to go ahead and get started, um, even though we're short uh, some of our membership. Um, we want to welcome you here tonight, and um, thank you again for your participation, and Ellen's going to go ahead and kick us off with the um, All right. presentation tonight. Good evening. So happy to be here. Um, if we can go to the agenda. So our goal for tonight is to whittle down the criteria to 15 or less. The original prioritization criteria had 12. Um, we really don't want to see it get a whole lot further than that, although right now we have 42 different criteria on the table. So it's a tough ask to get us down there, but we have a game plan and hopefully, um, hopefully we can really talk about what most important to be prioritized um, so we can get a manageable list. Uh, reviewing the role of the committee, we're going to quickly run through those pieces. Then we're going to talk about the community survey a little bit, and then we're going to get straight into the meeting discussion where we're going to spend the whole majority of our time. And then we have public comment and we'll review our next steps. Um, next slide. So just as a, a quick introduction, remember that the, your role as a committee member is to update the criteria that will serve for the basis of the priority sites, which we have 19 of. And this is what's going to set the project sequencing um, as a recommendation to the board. The board has the final say on, on this, but this committee will move it forward and you'll see a collection of the representatives that we are supposed to have um, on the right. Next slide. Just as a reminder of the norms, I won't go through all of these, but we remember that um, all views are important. Participation needs to be equitable and balanced. We are going to go through people's first comments, first round of comments first before rounding back to anybody. Um, expect that there will be some disagreement, especially tonight, um, but we we want to be tough on the issues and not on each other, and once we vote, we vote, and that's, that's how it works in the majority rule. Next slide. We will have public comment, although this is not a Brown, me Brown Act meeting. Uh, the public is welcome to comment. We'll have a total of 20 minutes and allow up to each two minutes for each person, depending on the number of speakers. Next slide. Okay, so the community survey update, um, we did discover a little bit of a discrepancy that occurred halfway through the um, survey where the scale changed on some of the questions. And so what we did is we went back through and recalculated by percent so that that change in scale um, did not have an effect on the results. And so this is bringing that, that version of the um, community survey back. And so I, the, as far as how they are labeled, you'll notice that they have these letters next to those, uh, next to each criteria. That's because in the following slide, we have put um, letter identifiers next to the different criteria that are on the board just so that we can keep them straight. Um, and they're in alphabetical order um, as far as how the Padlet responses went. Um, but this gives you an idea of what the community thought these different criteria should be as far as what's the least important versus the most important. Uh, it might be something you keep in mind as we look at the criteria and whether we want to keep items on the table or take them off the table. Next slide. So this is our task before us. We have, we've taken the Padlet results. So thank you to anybody who participated in the Padlet. Um, we had thumbs up and thumbs down that was on the Padlet and if it had a thumbs up, we did a positive number. If it had a thumbs down, we minus that point. And that's how we came up with the score. 
So we reorganized the cri possible criteria into um, by that score. And, and this was just a way to start working through it. So we haven't eliminated anything yet. Um, if you recall on the Padlet, if it was a yellow um, tag, that meant that it was an existing criteria. If it was a white tag, it was um, offered up by the community. And we did read that there were some comments on the Padlet about, can you clarify this further? The difficulty is these were comments from the community, so we don't really have any context or background to what they really wanted or meant. Um, so what we have is is what's shown here. Um, so we don't we don't really know, and that's for the committee to decide if they choose that that should be a criteria how to define it. Um, so we have 42 different criteria listed here, and we've got to get it down to a more manageable size. Um, one of the thoughts that we had was this last grouping, which scored the lowest on the Padlet. Um, so BB through RR. What we're thinking is we should go ahead and take those off unless somebody has a proposal to continue to cr consider one of the criteria. So if anybody on the committee thinks that anything between BB and RR should continue to be considered, please raise your hand now and let's discuss that. So we're Ellen, gonna look at, yes. I'm sorry, we don't have the option, or at least I don't have the option to raise a hand. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay, let me look. I wouldn't lie to you. Let me look on how to do that. Hello? Can you tell us mute yourself? I don't know if I'm the only um, person or not. But. Allow us attendees to raise their hand. It's it's checked. Now I've unchecked it. Oh, we've got people raising their hand. Can you raise your hand now? Maybe because you were a co-host. I don't know. I don't know why that would affect anything. I mean, I don't know. I was seeing it. I was seeing other people with raising their hands. So it's because of the because you're the co-host. It goes away when you're a co-host. So you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, Don. Okay. Since we can see your video, we can see you. Oh, you can because I can't so see anybody else's video. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mind. So you'll, I just, you'll just have to raise your hand the, the old fashioned way. All right, that's no problem. Um, but so I it, see uh, Veronica has her hand up. So can we go to Veronica and see if she has a proposal for us? Chamberlain can't raise her hand. Oh, okay, there it goes. Um, yeah, so I'm reading here and. The size of the multi-purpose room? Yes. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, I have a bad experience at Collins Elementary. It's really small for all the kids and the parents when we gather together. Okay, so now remember when we're talking about criteria, we're looking at how we're judging one school to another versus how we what we want when we rebuild okay so just because it's not a criteria does not mean that we won't be doing that when we rebuild um but that's um but it's it's totally possible that we recon we uh continue to consider the multi-purpose room one um does anybody else have an additional one that we would like to, uh, Don, I see your hands up. You want me to speak? Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, was this sent out to us so that we could read it in advance? Yes. It was. It was sent out this morning, which was not a lot of advance, but it was sent out this morning. Okay, I mean, I, I came straight from work. I didn't get a chance to to look at this guy. But my 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 concern is first, this is a lot a lot to to soak in uh, while we're discussing it. 
but as you may notice, I'm having to hold a magnifying glass up because I, the, the font is so small on, on my laptop that it's very difficult to read. It's not really conducive to being able to, to review everything and be able to discuss it and, and pull it off. Uh, it would have been very handy to have had this earlier than just this morning. I understand. Thank you. Um, what we can do is, is Tim, can you, I'm adding the additional criteria. If you could, could you please read through BB through RR so that we know which ones we're discussing right now? Sure. Uh, BB is sites with greatest environmental impact carbon footprint. And it's the thumbs up two, thumbs down one, so a score of one right now. You want me to read all of them and then come back, or do you want to? Yes, please, please read through all of them. Okay, CC is the lowest performing school uh, with a thumbs up of three, a thumbs down of two, and a score of one. DD is e equality. Um, for school type, equity and equality for school type. This would be like the high school, the K-8, etc. cetera. Uh, thumbs up was one, uh, thumbs down was zero, score was one. Now, the, just, just, to be clear, just to clarify, these are all from the Padlet. So if you went to the Padlet, you saw these there, which has been out for the last week. Um, the next one is EE. Size by purpose room, thumbs up one, thumbs down one, so a score is zero. Um, and the rest of these that I'm going to read off right away are all zeros. Um, FF is accommodations for non traditional students. GG is can the school be used for another purpose? HH is serves a geographically isolated population. II is impact of school site needs on maintenance. JJ, which is in yellow, is the age of the school. And in yellow- and the yellow, remember, significant, significant, just significant, yes, <laughs> means that, that it was part of the previous criteria. So these three were previously on the criteria list. So JJ, KK, which was completed phases of design, LL, economically disadvantaged area. Okay, then we're out of that and into minus ones, MM, which is multiple school programs are housed at on site. N is lack of community access to playgrounds, sports fields, and meeting rooms. OO is school with the largest achievement gap. PP is the demographic composition of the surrounding neighborhood, older versus younger families. And then we jump into minus three, and those are QQ, family engaged in school, RR, age of student population. That's the list on the right hand side. Yes, uh, Veronica, I believe you can take your hand down now. Uh, Christina, if you get on mute. Christina? Can you unmute? There we go. Um, hi, everybody. Good evening. So I just wanted to comment on JJ, um, which talks about the age of school. Um, I think it's really unfortunate that it did not get more votes up. Sometimes schools get overlooked about getting um, a new campus or new additions to the campus because we look at the last time that they received or were given a brand new um, building or section. And so when we look at certain schools and think, oh, they just got a new building, but when we think about the overall age of the school and how much uh, work it needs, I think it's important that we also take that into consideration. So I, I would like 
um, members to think about age of school um, as an important criteria. Okay, so I've added that one to the consider list. Uh, do we have additional ones that want to be added to the consider list? from the last column. So we're looking at DB through RR. Otherwise, we're going to um, Don, not Don has, those Don, Don has his hand up there. Okay. I Go have ahead, to, Don. Thank you very much. I have to agree with Christina. The age of the school to me is a critical factor. Uh, I mean, we take a look at El Cerrito High School. It was about 75 years old. You take a look at Steege right now. That was built, what, 1946. Uh, these schools are not getting any better with age. Uh, it, it's not like anything, any s significant uh, modifications were done to these very old schools that would mitigate the fact that they're just old. Uh, I mean, forget about the fact that they're technologically outdated. And many of them may still have two prong outlets, for instance. Uh, they may only have one, one outlet in a room, uh, you know, substandard lighting. But the, the fact is that they're falling apart because they are so old. That to me, that's a critical factor that has to be considered. You know, once you, I mean, you need to be able to consider it and then mitigate it down uh, at, at a later date, but you don't just not consider the, the age of the school. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're just, we're putting them back on the list if there's anybody who wants to save them. So that one's been saved. Is there another one that wants to be saved or are we good with eliminating the last column? Hearing. Do we have any other hands? Seeing no hands. Seeing no so hands and hearing. Yes. We we heard in the chat that a, a couple of people had a hard time raising their hand. So I'm not okay. sure if uh, Ms. Chamberlain or Mr. De Leon wanted to um, share their thoughts before we move on. Thank you, Melissa. Go ahead and speak up if there was if somebody wants to save another criteria. You have to un unmute, Jose. I don't see any hands raised or anybody with information in the chat. Uh, no, thank you. Age of the school is important. Thank you. Okay, we got that one. Okay, I think then we've we've done that group. So we're so we're gonna shift. That was trying to get rid of the low hanging fruit. So we're gonna shift gears here, and we're going to start at the top. And what I've done is I've created a poll for, for all of the different criteria that we have. So now we can go through and discuss each criteria individually and whether or not we think it should stay or not, and then we'll take a vote. Um, so the first one on board is number or is letter A, number of years since last improvement. This was an original criteria that was from 2016, the way the metric that was used were the dollars spent per student since 1991, including bond funds plus state matching funds. So basically, however much work was done on the campus counted against you towards um, that school being prioritized higher. So the more money spent per student, the lower the priority score you received. So that's how this one worked. Um, I know it was kind of, it's kind of backwards, right? So the higher the number, the, the lower the score. Um, so if anybody would like to discuss whether the merits of this particular criteria, um, since we have a relatively small group, I think we could probably just go ahead and speak up. And if somebody starts speaking while and you didn't hear them first, just go ahead and drop off and let them finish and then we'll get the next comment in. So does anybody have any comments that they want to say before we vote on this first criteria? 
I do. I, I, my concern is, is not how many years it's been since last improvement. It's not how much money was spent on the improvement, but what was the improvement? Was it given a, a fresh coat of paint? I mean, that's lipstick on a pig. I mean, it's not a significant uh, improvement on the school. It doesn't make the, the technology in the, in the classrooms any better. It doesn't mean that the, the windows aren't leaking. So uh, I don't believe that this, the way it's worded, at least the metrics part of it uh, is correct. Okay, anybody else have a comment on this before we vote? So just wanted to share with the group, we, I just, I apologize, we're all learning Zoom together. You should now be able to unmute yourselves and not need permission if you could give that a try and just keep letting us know if there's anything else we can do to help. Yeah, I have a similar comment. Um, uh, an exterior project, uh, something to do with a playground or something to do with a stadium or repainting or repaving um, outside of the main building um, is not the same thing as addressing issues inside the building where all the students are in. Agree. So just to clarify, though, to make sure that we're all talking the same thing, this is bond funding only. So if it was maintenance dollars, which a lot of times like the, the painting and the asphalt repair and things are maintenance dollars, those did not count. Um, this had to be an actual major bond program um, project. It would have been a capital improvement. So just a clarification, Ellen, too. Um, at this particular point, we're not deciding on the metrics, are we? Um, it would be the next yeah. one we would talk about the metrics. So, so it's the subject that we're more uh, we're voting on, not not the metrics at this point. We can change the metrics next time. Um, this is Sandra. Um, what about money spent to move you forward in the? bond program moving you forward to uh, in the process could you restate that question or the uh, question um, for example one of our schools in our area it's, they've spent money bond money has been used to move you forward to remove an old building um, but not necessarily to get a new building to replace that we've moved forward in the process but not um, don't actually have a new building. So at this moment in time, we haven't updated this. Uh, we haven't updated any of the criteria since the 2016. That's one thing we'll have to decide when we're doing the metrics portion is whether we re reevaluate these different criteria metrics um, based on 2016 data or 2020 data. So at this moment in time, anything that has been done since 2016 does not count. Um, but I don't know in the future, it'll be up to the committee whether that counts or not. Because there was also critical needs projects that were completed on quite a few of these campuses. And so that will be, and, and that was, that project was a critical needs project. So I don't know if we'll we'll consider that or not. Although right now from the comments, I don't even know if this criteria is going to last. <laughs> Any other comments on this criteria? No? Okay, should we move on to the, so it turns out I can do all 10 at the same time, which I didn't realize. So. We're going to talk about the first 10. So the next one is physical condition. So this was originally a criteria. It was the assessment scores that were completed by the architectural team that completed the master plan. They went around and did an assessment of all of the schools of the 21 schools. They created assessment scores. One of them had specifically to do with the condition of the school, which looked at the quality of the roof, the, the windows, the, and it also included the site. So the asphalt, the concrete, the air conditioning unit, um, if those things 
physically worked well or were in good shape is what this criteria was. Um, do we have any comments on this one? I think the physical condition of the school is, is should be one of the top priorities to, to consider. I mean, if you've got a school that uh, is in very, very good shape, why are you spending money on it? If you've got a school that's falling down, even if it's a relatively young school, uh, you know, that's where the money should be going. Okay, any other comments? All right, next one is seismic needs. So seismic is um, the ability to withstand an earthquake. And there was a report that was completed by structural engineers in 2002 that, that reviewed these different um, buildings and gave a score to them. And so the, the more with the better seismic rating gave the school less of a priority. So if you had seismic issues, it was a higher priority. Now, quite a few of the projects that we completed in the critical needs um, projects that have been done since 2016 have focused on the worst of the seismic uh, issues. So that's just a, a caveat to this one. Any discussion? Uh, you mentioned that, or it says on the report that the 2002 data will be used. Mm -hmm. um, does that still apply or would we be able to get a more updated report? So the information is still current. It's just about the structural uh, capability of the building. So these, that, that information is pretty much static. Unless there was an improvement to the building that would have um, corrected some of those deficiencies. Okay, Which and we, we would have that on improvement. record. Yeah, we would have that on record. Would... Yes. Yes. Oh. If, okay. if you're asking if we have reports, the answer is yes. Okay. And we we do know which buildings we have improved since since 2016, and really okay. since 2000, 2002. Under eight. Mm -hmm. Somebody talking? See, I have a concern about uh, uh, making a, the seismic issue a, a high priority. And we don't want any schools to be falling down around our, our young kids. Uh, so, but uh, we have to do a cost benefit analysis. I mean, how many hours in the week are these the students actually in the classrooms? You know, what is the actual risk of a, a major catastrophe? I mean, when, I mean, we all know that we're not going to be getting, we, we don't have 9.5 earthquakes on a regular basis. We, we do have earthquakes, but you know, do, we, uh, do we prioritize the seismic issue above other issues, uh, even though the risk may be very, very low? Because most of the buildings in Richmond, for instance, uh, are far, far below the, the standards that in 2002 virtually nothing is being done. We're not just talking about residences, we're talking commercial buildings because they were built at a, at a time when, uh, when the standards were lower uh, and they're, they're older. But, you know, we, I'd say we don't, we don't tear down a school just because it's, uh, it doesn't meet the, the seismic standards of 2002. Okay. Any other comments on seismic? That looks All right, so the next one is lack of technology infrastructure. Again, this was um, a criteria in 2016 and the IT department provided grading by which to um, state how, how good the infrastructure is. And again, infrastructure is the wires inside the building and, and not technology in the classroom like computers and projectors. I think we all know that if you don't have the proper kind of infrastructure that the, the students are going to be suffering because they're not going to be able to get online. They're not going to be able to get, uh, have, make use of the computers. This is one of the bigger problems that we've got with the, the virtual learning at home where the students don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, they don't have electricity. They don't have uh, what they need to be able to study properly. And we've got some of our schools that are woefully worse than other schools. So this should be a higher priority, in my opinion. 
Any other comments? All right, the next one is the school site lack of windows. So this is a public, this is the first one we've had that, that came off the survey. Um, so uh, that's the extent of the, the knowledge that we have about uh, this particular um, question. Can I ask a clarification? Aside from Kennedy and Richmond High Schools, do we have schools that don't have windows? Uh, I would say no. Okay. So this, this would be a criteria that applies to, to two out of the 20 plus schools that are left on the list. Well, it also might be a metric of amount of, I mean, I don't know how exactly we would grade it, but it also might apply as far as the amount of windows per square foot or something. Uh, so it would be a gradation uh, depending on, because we obviously like portables and things have very few windows compared to the amount of square footage um, versus some of the other schools that have an entire window wall. It could be windows in the classroom versus windows in an office space. Right. Any other thoughts on the window? Yes, yes. please go so, for it. So for Kennedy and Richmond High, would they meet code standards with the number of windows that are currently there? I think um, if I'm looking at the entire list, I think that this is something that maybe can be consolidated as part of um, ventilation or uh, a criteria to ensure that the sites are meeting code standards, um, at least something more modern than probably what the Kennedy High and, and Richmond High were built with. But um, it just would be helpful to understand would they meet today's code standards? Based upon the classroom square footage and the occupancy, they still have egress, egress doors to the classroom, so they would meet current code. Or they, they meet code at the time, so. But not current code. That, I, I don't have the answer for tonight, but I don't believe that windows would be a criteria that would necessarily be required. Okay, thank you. Certainly something we can work on clarification. Any other uh, comments on the lack of windows? Okay. Uh, the uh, next yes, one sorry, is... I have one. Yes, go Just, ahead. Um, could you please research the the need for, for windows in, in a space like that? I understand the egresses, but there is no natural flowing air inside the building. And I thought that was some might be necessary in a big building. Well, and, and we can, I, I mean, the committee can talk about the adjusting this if ventilation is the primary reason for this um, particular criteria, we can adjust it to ventilation, which also would expand it to additional schools because depending on what the uh, system is that provides ventilation, there are different levels um, across different schools using both the, the windows as an option, any operable windows at least, and um, whatever the, the actual uh, ventilation system was structured for. Um, so if that's something the committee's interested in, we can make that change. Otherwise, there is general um, agreement that natural daylight at least is important for learning and does improve uh, student performance um, so it might be because of that also i i don't know at times um I've, got, I've had a question on and been requested. Um, this is Kim Chamberlain from SSA. We've had it brought up in solutions over the fact that the windows don't open 
at some of the school sites in the classrooms. So they may have a pretty window to look out, but they have nothing to open up. And as we can tell by our environment, that we are getting more and more hot days. And sometimes the students need that ventilation as well as the teachers. We have another criteria on here also as the lack of air conditioning. Um, so if anybody would want to, we can, if there is a proposal brought forward by one of the committee members, um, we could adjust this to be about ventilation and air conditioning and kind of combine these together or if that's desired. I'm not sure that blending them together is the right approach because uh, having light in the room is not the same as having uh, access to, to fresh air. So I, I would hate to, hate for uh, one of those to uh, to shoot it down because say, well, we don't need fresh air, so we, we don't need windows, when that may not be the case at all. I would see uh, having them as separate items. Fair enough. We can get to the air conditioning one later. Um, is there another hand on this or another comment on, on Windows? Otherwise, we'll, I don't mean to keep pushing us along, but we haven't made it through the first 10 yet. So, <laughs> all right, next, next one is schools already through stages of construction process, interim campus, demo, rebuild ground. I think this is an important thing to be considering because you, let's take a look at Valley View. Valley View was very high on the list for a total rebuild. And instead they replaced it with, you know, the portable type buildings. That's not really a rebuild, but uh, at what point does it, Valley View uh, end up on the, on the list? It, it hasn't been completely fixed, but it, uh, it isn't as bad as it was. Right, Valley View is still one of the 19 sites, and so while they are currently they are currently in a temporary campus, but that does not mean that they were taken off the list of 19. So, but I mean that's I think probably why this criteria was was placed, um, if I had to guess. Well, I need, I Other think, comments? I'm sorry, I just think, think it needs to be kept on there and be considered. Yep. Sorry. Fair enough. I I'm I'm not judging that one way or another. I just want to reconfirm that, that it, just because they are in a temporary campus does not mean that they weren't on the list any longer. Um, any other comments? Okay, security camera coverage on site. Now I'm assuming, um, and anybody who thinks differently um, could could change this, but I'm assuming that if the, this campus is lacking security camera coverage, then we would put it higher on the priority list. Um, I, that's what I think this means. Discussion? I, I hate to be hogging all the conversations. So that's why I back off a little bit. But uh, the problem with security cameras is you have to ask, what are the purpose of them? If it, is it to try to prevent crime? Is it try, try to document crimes? Uh, because if it, unless you've got somebody looking at the cameras, you've got a lot of cameras on these campuses, unless you've got somebody looking at the cameras 24 seven, then they're not really doing a whole lot of good. If you just want it to be able to try to find somebody after the fact and or use it in a court case, that's a different matter. Uh, but security cameras can be a very expensive part of the process. So we have to ask ourselves, if we're, if we're gonna spend the money on the technology, are we also gonna spend money on the manpower to, uh, to monitor the cameras? Has this well, project again, been this brought into the IT department? Because I believe they had to vest that at several different um, locations because this question was brought to our solutions team at one point in time. And I know, because this question kept coming up over and over again, especially with Kennedy. And I know Richmond High and if, and the De Anza rebuild the new the new campuses. How are we going to make sure that the infrastructure was there 
you have to make sure the infrastructure is there also when you're rebuilding or putting in this type of technology plus the manpower i agree with you don on that piece of it you have to have somebody able to abide by that and with the cuts that we've had in economics we don't have the manpower anymore to do that so that would be interesting to how we're going to continue that process well the other thing is this is not whether or not we should put cameras into the rebuilds right we are just judging we're trying to create which criteria um we want to use to say this this school should go first versus another school going first so if security camera coverage is something that that the committee wants to use as a like a benchmark on whether we rebuild the canvas or not that's fine but that we just got to make sure that we know that it's not about whether we add cameras or not to campus it's it's whether that is the benchmark we want to use to say this campus goes first versus that campus i think it should be considered on all campuses as a criteria to as an addition not a criteria but as an addition so the concern I have is if we're going to use it as a criteria on the placement on, uh, on the list and then we do nothing with security cameras on the rebuild then it's it's misleading the public yeah if if I were to see this and say that well, okay that school was placed higher because uh, they don't have as much sec many security cameras. I would anticipate that when it's rebuilt, you're going to have security cameras on there. I'd be very angry if I found out afterwards that it was just a smokescreen. Well, the security camera is a, you know, we have to make sure that all of our rebuilds follow board policy. So if board policy allows for cameras and identifies how they're going to be used, that's that's what we will do in the rebuild. Um, but it, it's we've got to be careful on this particular topic because it, there is um, a broader community discussion that has to be had on the role of, of security cameras and where they should be located. And again, I think just a question of whether this would be a criteria for prioritizing a school for rebuild versus a need that the school might have for an improvement underneath security. Okay, the next one is unsafe playgrounds, athletics facilities. Um, just, just for a point of clarification, the site condition was part of the overall physical condition assessment. So there was, that did play a role in that score. Um, however, it also included a, a bunch of other things like I listed before the roof, the HVAC unit, the windows, the floors. Um, so it was consolidated within that. Um, but there, but so we could have this as a separate one or we could um, realize that it, it also had some coverage in the physical condition one. It should have coverage in the physical condition because that if you can't, you have a beautiful campus and the kids can't go outside and enjoy the fresh air without becoming in risk of injury. You need to have the camp, the outside of the campus as well as the inside of the campus in top physical condition. One of my concerns just from reading that the way this is described, it suggests that we have unsafe playground slash athletic facilities on our campuses right now. And if we do, I would hope that they would either be the unsafeness would be corrected or that they'd be removed. Uh, unsafe is unsafe and it, it's not, it should never be permitted. Additional comments on this one? Okay, so we have two more be, and then we're gonna vote on the top 10. Uh, on that last one, I was just thinking maybe it should be combined with physical condition. Excellent. So when you're considering whether you vote yes or no to the unsafe playgrounds or athletic fields, um, consider that it, it 
it could be combined with the physical condition because that is covered under that score. Additional comments? Okay. Number of restrooms, sinks per student. Is there a, a metric that is used when um, constructing schools that is, and does it differentiate between elementary and high school? It, the plumbing code is used. It does not differentiate between elementary and high school. Um, but there is a plumbing code that dictates how many fixtures there should be per student. It has changed over time. so earlier constructions may or may not be up to the current code. Any other thoughts on this one? Okay, number 10, lack of access to green space. And after we finish with the comments on this one, we're gonna go ahead and vote on this first group of 10. All right, hearing none, let's see if I can do this correctly. All right, so now it's been launched. So if you wanna go through and look at that top first 10 and vote, vote, vote yes or no or abstain, um, we can see if we've narrowed down uh, some of these or not. I'm sorry, how are we voting on this? I, I'm... So what you're looking at is whether you think- No, no, these, how do we cast these... the vote? Oh. Uh, we have a panelist that she can't you cast can't, the vote. can't vote. Uh... We can't vote. We can't vote. Okay. Well, let me just a second. Just a second. Let me. Uh, Technical let's, difficulty. Let's, let's, right. Let me look. See if there's a check mark box that I should have checked or not checked. Um, it worked last time. You guys voted just fine last time. Allow panelists to rename themselves. Whatever you did last time, do it again. I know. Seriously. Let me uh, lock webinar, start video, raise hand. So, so it says out. it says that host and panelists cannot vote. Oh, well, that's dumb. That's, that's what the poll says. Host and panelists cannot <laughs> vote. Okay. Uh, here, let me let me stop that and let me look at if I there's a control point in the in the polling itself. Right. Um, and uh, I apologize, I have to be for about 10 minutes. Uh, I have to attend the virtual honor roll. I'll be back. Okay. okay. Thank you, Jose. Polling in progress. Well, I'm not in progress anymore. In polling. Okay. Edit. Yeah. It's always interesting when Zoom changes from one time to another. Isn't it though? Why does it have to change? Like I didn't change any of the chat marks. It should have just worked. Well, how frustrated can we make somebody? <laughs> uh, and it doesn't matter every time you think, oh, I've tested this, like, you know, yeah. over and over again, and it's, it's going to work, and then it doesn't work. Okay, what if we share results? Stop sharing results. 
So you try to create the pull-in again? Yeah, well, I was trying to allow panelists to vote. There you go. Okay, I see a check mark box. The question is, will it, can I go back to the other one and allow me to do that? It's not there on this one. Why is it not there on this one? So, hi, Ellen. Um, I have an option to relaunch the polling. Would you like me to give that a try? Sure, go for it. See if that works. Can you vote now? No. Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. John, you're a panelist, so we may have to yes. demote you. You have to close it out and then come back in. I, I, I'm sorry. I worry about you, you demote me that the recording stops. Uh, maybe we can just take my vote. We could do that. Um, the problem is we're all hosts too. Maybe I demote you. You can do that. Okay. Here, let me let me demote Lewis, and then he can vote for you, I guess. Okay. Uh, um. Actually, you're not you're not a pan. It looks like you're just a panelist. Can you vote? No. I cannot vote. You cannot vote. Oh, here with withdrawal co-host. Okay. How about now? Yes. So Don for number one. Uh no. Two. Yes. Three. No. Four. Yes. Five. No. Six. Yes. Seven. No. Eight. No. Nine. No. And ten. No. Okay, you're submitted. Okay, so right now it looks like I've got three people in. Now we've got four people in. So we'll we'll keep it open for a, for a while longer because we'd like at least all the people we have on board to, to vote. How many actually actual members do we have here today? Eight, nine? So we have one, two. We have a total of 15, take away four, seven, say 11. 11. Okay. Yes, I'm getting 11. I would say 11. 11. So right now we looks like we've had seven vote. And if Mr. Dillion is still on, he has stepped away. Right. No, I don't. Looks like he may have dropped off. All right, so, oh, we got another one in. Good deal, we're up to 10. So we've got almost everybody who's on the committee in. Um, I believe we're missing one. We're missing one, so. Would that be Jose? No, he's off the call right now, I don't see him. Oh. He wasn't in our list of 11. Actually, he would be because there's 14 panelists now. Oh, okay. Uh, you have them all. 
Okay, so let's end polling and see how this turned out. So the number one, we have no as the current leader. Number two, it looks like everybody's in agreement with yes on that one. Size McMead, yes is quite a bit, in, or well, it's only one vote ahead. Uh, technology, I, 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 we have. I'm sorry, Ellen. Uh, yes. It'd be, if you say oh, it's I, ahead, but you got to count the sorry, sorry. Share results. Can you guys see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, what about counting the abstention? Abstention counts as a no. It's it's not a yes. Okay. So. The first one, our number of years since last improvement, we've got four yeses, um, but it looks like no's, no's the winner there. We've got physical condition, everybody liked that one. Seismic needs, um, yes, has five. Lack of technology, we have nine, almost everybody liked that one. Most people like the school site, lack of windows. Uh, seven said yes for the schools already through stages of construction. Security cameras, no. Unsafe playgrounds, yes. Um, number of restrooms and sinks per student is yes as well. Now, because, oh, and, and lack of green space is also currently yes. Um, because we have a limited participation tonight, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and keep these results and use them as our place to to show next meeting, but make sure we have some confirmation at the following meeting um, so that we can send these results out and make sure that uh, that we have a few more of the committee members chime in uh, if possible and and start the next meeting with these. Um, especially because we're probably not going to make it through all of them tonight. So, but we can, we still have a little bit more time. So let's see if we can get through the next 10. So let's see. After the lack of green space, we're back to um, criteria that were previously considered before which is functionality. This is how well the, um, it meets the educational program. The, the building fits the educational program and that's both building and site. Um, that was an assessment score done by uh, the master plan architect. Um, any discussion on functionality? How do we address the fact that the, uh, how we, conduct our classes may change over over the period of time. I mean, as, for, I mean, as an example, uh, the Obama model versus everybody else. I mean, do we, I mean, we built a school for 50 to 75 years, but so how do we factor in that, the fact that we may be changing the model, you know, uh, right after they cut the ribbon? Very true. Um, we use the standards at the time, which, to uh, do the assessment previously, but that is a good point. Things do change over time. Um, uh, additional comments on this one on functionality? Um, are they going to be updated? Again, that will be up to the committee when we get to the metrics component or discussion, which hopefully will happen next meeting. Okay. Additional comments? Okay, over or nearing capacity. This was done previously um, by using the utilization without portables. So basically we took the number of seats in the school in the permanent buildings, not counting the portables, and divided that by the number of students attending. So that's what this was and the, if they were over 100% capacity. Uh, they scored higher on the list. 
discussion here? That's important. Okay, next one, if there's, if the school has a secure perimeter or not, um, this was a public comment, so I'm assuming it means, um, you know, whether there's gating and, and uh, the ability um, for a single point entry through the, for the office. Uh, that's what we normally refer to as a secure perimeter. Any comments on this one? A secure perimeter is, is, it can be a, just a standalone item. I mean, you don't really consider rebuilding the school because uh, yeah, you've got an open gate in the back of the, the football field. Uh, I mean, it, whether it's uh, you know, the fencing around the school itself or whether it's access to the main office or even the access through the front portals, that is something that can be uh, easily remedied without addressing the entire school. And, and just as a point of clarification here as well, that is a criteria, or I keep using criteria, but it is something that we looked at when we did the functionality. Uh, that was one of the components of the functionality score. Any other thoughts on this one? Nope. Poor drop off and pick up. This one I'm assuming is like the vehicular circulation um, of when you're coming to school and leaving school. I would say yes, important. Other comments? No. Okay. I would agree with I would agree with Dawn. It's very important, especially with the transportation issues that families have nowadays and the timeliness and the safety concerns of dropping off a child or or an adult to work. So it is a, a huge concern. Okay. Additional thoughts? Lack of STEM program and STEM, just for those who may not be familiar with that terminology, is science, technology, engineering, and math. So this or may or may not be expanded to like uh, career technical education, um, those kind of spaces. Okay. Number of portables on campus. I believe that's pretty self-explanatory. Any thoughts there? That's important. I'm assuming that the number of portables is bad. Um, and is that, would is that something that could be connected to L over or nearing capacity? Otherwise, why would schools have portables? Because they're cheaper than a new school. The, the part of over and near capacity, since we don't count the portables as space, um, the schools that have more portables would be downgraded for the most part on the, this score as well. So there would be some overlap on how schools scored. Um, because obviously, if we don't count the the seats within the portables as places for kids they most likely would be counted as over capacity all right um school located in temporary facilities this kind of coincides a little bit with the portables because for the most part portables were thought to be a temporary um, solution so they um, and all of our temporary sites currently are portable with the exception of the students the the Obama students that are waiting for their school to to reopen uh, where does this apply? If Valley View, um, 
Is that really that's, temporary? Yeah, that that was a temporary campus. Um, it applies Kennedy to kind of. I'm sorry, yeah. Kennedy High School. That temporary campus is uh, was was used while schools were being rebuilt. Coronado is an example, but it's being used for the charter schools right now. So, does that does that apply? Mm -hmm. So, um, if, as far as closing the loop on Kennedy, the, that project has not moved forward yet, but it is in the works um, for the, the main building, uh, or at least it, it's next on the list of projects to be done. Um, as far as the critical needs go, the, uh, I heard Mandarin um, at Sarah, Sarah's technically not a temporary campus, but it does not house the per student population. Um, but it kind of all really folds back into the over and nearing capacity. So there, there's quite a bit of duplication between this one, the over and nearing capacity, as well as the portable on campus. Uh, the next one is the lack of air conditioning. So we discussed this a little bit earlier. Um, we can maintain it as the lack of air conditioning or it also could be adjusted when we get to the metrics discussion to talk about ventilation in general. It seems like that was one of the um, selling points of Measure R to the community. Very true. So I don't know if any of the 19 campuses have air conditioning. Now that I think about it. <laughs> Probably not because they're on the rebuild list. Now. Right. right. <laughs> All right. Any other comments there? Okay. The next one is enrollment projections versus capacity on site. And I believe this one probably is looking forward. Um, so right now we were using for the over and nearing capacity that that criteria was using current student count. Um, but I believe this one is looking at enrollment projections in the future. Well, that's a novel idea actually looking at the future, isn't it? I think that's, mm. this is a critical item. You know, is, is there going to be a need for a school in that area at all? Or is there going to be a need for an additional school in that area? Or just cool. more capacity? Sure. I would like this one. To, I mean, we, the Korematsu campus is a prime example of this area. I'm not expecting the housing developments that have come into play over there in that area with the um and brought in a lot of single families which overcapacitated a 600 student school is what we thought we were building and now we're well oh, we're getting closer to eight so that's another area which means we have elementary schools that are not going to have their capacities it met either so what else is it, where what other housing development areas such as Washington and the point they've added mi many more houses single fa family homes of in that area out in um, Hercules you're starting to have all that criteria built up so I think we need to really start paying attention to those great Additional thoughts? The next one is, uh, sorry, I lost my place. Um, ADA compliance. So ADA in this particular uh, circumstance is the American with Disability Act. So this is really 
uh, wheelchair accessibility, uh, those who are in visually impaired having braille signs, um, flat level surfaces, uh, all of those components. Um, and this was a part of the assessment also done by the master plan architects. Uh, it was original criteria from 2016. How did we get away with, without going to, to jail over Kennedy High School for 53 years without an elevator to the second floor? I don't get it. I mean, this is a critical item. We, this, uh, we have more and more uh, of our students that, that need the assistance. And we've got to factor that in better than we have done. All right, if there's no additional comments on these, uh, we're up to our next 10. So we're ready for the next poll. Hopefully this one goes smoother than the last one. We'll see. All right, you should be able to see it right now, right? Okay, good. Don, if you could just let me know when you're ready. You go ahead. One. No, yes. Two. Yes. Three. No. Three. Is that all the poet? Four. Uh, yes. Five. Yes. Six. Yes. Seven. No. Eight. No. Nine. Yes. And ten. Yes. like we have eight in so we're getting closer nine which Jill able to come back no he's not back no. okay all right so then we have 10 in, so I believe that might be everybody. Is anybody still working on it? Speak up if you are. I think we got them all. Okay. So let's share the results this time. All right. So functionality, that, that went well. Nine, uh, over or nearing capacity, 10. School perimeter. We had no's at seven, uh, poor drop off. We have yeses at seven, lack of STEM program space. Yes is at eight, um, number of portables on campus. Yes is at seven, schools located in temporary facilities. No's at six. Oh, lack of air conditioning tied right down the middle. Enrollment projections uh, versus capacity on the site. Yes is at eight and uh, ADA compliance, yes is at nine. So we have one more little, we have another batch of these to go, but considering we have uh, eight minutes left in the meeting, we are going to um, 
keep we'll we'll save that for the next meeting. Um, and Tim, if you can move us forward in the slide. We have two more meetings already scheduled. Week of the uh, oh, I, sorry, it's not week of. It's December first and December fifteenth. So December first, confirming metrics and discuss, discussing weights of metrics. Um, that will have to be the second half of the meeting. The first half of the meeting will will continue to narrow and see if we uh, in this like round of. Um, bringing things down if we make it through enough or if we will um if we will uh need extra time in an extra meeting to get to the metrics uh december 15th will be either finishing up the metrics or finalizing weight weighting and recommendations to the board um yes the invitations had them for 90 minutes for these now that we're past the initial discussion and introduction, we were scheduling these for 90 minutes. Um, now, if we could go on to public comment, if, if any of our public has a comment. Um, seeing none, does any of our panelists or Don, you've been a part of this the whole time. How can you have a public comment? Well, you didn't give me an opportunity to say something outside of the what was on the agenda. <laughs> okay, well, I was going to ask if the panelists had any closing uh, comments, so um, go ahead. That's all right. Uh, at our last meeting, we were said that you were told that we were going to be sent the minutes. I never got any minutes. We were told that we were going to be sent the the list of the names of the people on the panel and what affiliation they had. They said that was going to be in the minutes. Well, again, didn't get the minutes, so I didn't get the list either. These are important things. I have no idea who these people are. I mean, how many of the people on the, the participants list right now are part of this committee versus just members of the community. But also the idea of, of sending us out this, uh, the item, the, this list and everything, essentially six hours before the meeting. That's not acceptable. We need to give it, give us time to, to review it. Because uh, again, some people actually have day jobs and they can't, can't be checking their emails uh, throughout the day. So please help us out on that. We will get it, the minutes out. We have uh, three weeks before the next meeting. So um, we hear what you're saying and we'll make sure it gets out to the committee well in advance of the meeting. Thank you. Additional thoughts? Um, All right. Is there a way, sorry, really quick. Is there a way yeah, to hyperlink um, the, uh, the Darden report or some of the other reports that are referenced um, in these criteria? It would be helpful to have that, um, that information as reference points as we're weighting these metrics. I'm we'll assuming make sure we link this it. is publicly available information, but I just don't know where to actually find it all. We'll make sure we uh, connect the links for that so you have access to those documents prior to December 1st. Thank you. Back to Don. I didn't get it. I don't want to step ahead of anybody, but this, something came up. We had a bond oversight committee yes, meeting yes, yesterday. And when I gave a report on the prioritization, I pointed out that we said that we we're going to have a, a separate page on the, the district's website for, with this information. And I'm still not finding that, but we had a lot, number of people at the CBOC, not just the CBOC members, but members of the public and the uh, new school board members. They're all asking, where can we access this information? So if we can get that page on the website and make it accessible, uh, it might benefit us all. Right. We have a meeting scheduled to do that tomorrow. So I'm hoping it works out. 11.30 is when it's scheduled. I'm not sure if we'll get it done in the meeting or after, but we, we do have that on the on our calendars. All right, well, thank you again for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your participation. 
and um, did you have closing? No, thoughts? I was just going to say thank you very much again. Uh, I know these meetings uh, can be long, and it's a you know a hard task in front of us, but I think we're going to get through it. So again, thank you, um, and I hope you all have a a good holiday, and we'll see you on the first. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>